This is Planning with a Purpose with your host, Brian Akers, certified financial planner and founder of Akers Financial Group. Now, bringing personal financial planning to the lives of our listeners and clients, one person at a time, here's Brian Akers. Welcome to Planning with a Purpose. This is Brian Akers, certified financial planner and president of Akers Financial Group. Here with me today is my vice president, Jeff and, Akers. And your cousin, hence we have the same last name. Yes, yeah, so at the <laughs> Akers and Akers show today, this is a recorded show because today is Mother's Day. Yes, it is. And we want to say happy Mother's Day to um, our mothers and our wives with, who are mothers and yes. anybody else out there that is a mother. Yes, my wife is a mother and uh, this Mother's Day is actually the first Mother's Day for me without my mom because she passed yeah. away last year. But it's been a it's a good opportunity to reflect and to be thankful uh, for her, for her life. And so uh, I encourage everyone out there, if your mom is around, give her a call, spend some time with her, treasure the time you have with her. If she's gone on uh, before you, then just treasure the memories that you have. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons we're recording today, so we can treasure the memories with our with, with my mother and with our wives who are the mothers of our children. Yep. Treasure the time. Yep. So uh, what we want to do today is review our wonderful expo. We had a retirement expo a little over a week ago. And your mom um, came to the retirement expo. Yes, my <laughs> mother came and she helped with um, organizing it um, and make, doing a few things for us. It was awesome. Yeah. The, the more hands, the easier. <laughs> yeah. She helps my father in the Acres Tax Service business, and she's done that since the late 60s. Whoa. She used to hand type tax returns all the time. So Now that's love. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Putting it in there and getting the things lined up. One mistake, got to start all over. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. But the expo, the expo was a really good time last Friday. Yes. Yeah, so what we do at Acres Financial Group is we have an innovations and retirement planning expo that we host. We are the key sponsor to it. We've had it uh, each and every year for what? How many years now? Five? Six. This was number this six. This was number six. Wow. Brian had a dream a long time ago, and six years ago he made it happen, and we've been doing it ever since. Right, and the dream was to teach my existing clients, and they could bring friends and referrals, people that want to know about Acres Financial Group. They could come to our um, expo and meet the people that invest the money for our clients. They can cover topics that are right on leading edge when it comes to planning and investments and getting ready, or if you're in retirement, and have experts from around the country come in all in one location. And then every hour, um, they can choose which expert to hear. They can go and like, it's like a college class, you have a, your one o'clock course, and then you have your two o'clock, three and four. Then we take a little break. Uh, yeah. Unlike college, we have food the whole time. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Much and had, better than college. Then five o'clock, we had uh, one of our clients, his jazz group, and some heavy hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yeah, heavy hors d'oeuvres are my favorite. Heavy hors d'oeuvres is where you get crab dip or bacon wrap scallops, bacon wrap scallops, something good like that. I heard good things about them. Yeah, um, the food went so well that most of the crowd left and they didn't <laughs> stay for a finale at six o'clock. But um, we had um, three different speakers at the end, which are very, very good speakers. But, I don't think they all left. <laughs> There were a lot of people still there. We had a big crowd, and then it shrunk down to about 30%. But overall, it was a wonderful day. Uh, the weather was like it's been the last two weeks, which I wish was better. Miserable. Yeah. But the Retirement Expo, what we try to do is to teach and educate our clients so that this education will lead to an action. So as you listen to our show today and listen to these topics as we review what was covered that day, understand that our goal is for you to sit down and talk with us and understand where you are and what you need to do to help achieve your personal financial goals. We always start with a financial fingerprint. That is where you are now, understanding exactly your income, your future income, your investments, your assets, your debt, your budget, where are you now, so that we can take that financial fingerprint, build a financial plan, and implement that plan, providing the action you need to do financial planning and guide you into and through retirement. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to our website at acresfinancial.com, A-K-E-R-S-F-I-N-A-N-C-I-A-L.com. That was dangerous. Spelling financial gets me each time. i got to go financial. <laughs> I um, understand. Or you can call us at 410-692-9870. All right, so I know we had a lot of investment topics, uh, and one of them was Tom Harden, who was on the, sh on the radio show last week. Um, we had him speak during the day. One of the really nice things about the expo 
is that you know, we use third-party money managers and we sit down and explain what's going on and how it works uh, to our clients. But it's also really nice sometimes to get to hear it from the horse's mouth. Who's the guy that's actually managing the account? What's he thinking? What's he doing? And so Tom's one of the third-party money managers. He was on the show last week. He was at the expo and he did a couple of the classes. And so our clients could go and hear it from him about what he's doing. So Acres Financial Group, we are investment brokers. We are registered investment advisors. So we are actually a fee and or commission um, company. And that means that depending on the investment, we try to provide it um, to our clients whatever way um, is deemed to be the best way for the client. So a Canterbury Thermostat would be a third-party money manager and would be a fee-based or what they call a wrap fee. Right. And the wrap fee is where it's wrapping the compensation for the advisor, the manager, and also wraps in all trading costs. Right. I've heard that question a lot because some strategies do trade a lot. Right. And so people wonder, am I having to pay for all these trades? And the answer is, well, the wrap fee covers that. So you're not paying on a per-trade basis. Right. And so when we talk about third-party money managers and like Canterbury Thermostat, you have to look at the objective that they have. But one of the most important things that I think you need to look at is if you have private money management, what are they buying? So let's say they have a fee for advice and for management, and then what are they buying? Because what they buy will determine your overall fees. So if they are managing mutual funds, what you'll find is you'll find two layers of fees. Um, and Canterbury Thermostat, they actually manage um, exchange-traded funds, indexes. Index funds, which the expenses for an index fund are pretty small because you don't have to think. All you have to know is this stock got added or taken away from that index, so I add it or take it away from my fund. Mm -hmm. You're not having to research anything. Right, but the indexes are designed by different companies, and then they have to implement it with the lowest cost they can so that they do have to watch their trading cost as right. they implement whatever the index may be. There's um, over um, over 135 different indexes that are followed by um, Canterbury Thermostat, and then they have a, a way of, and a process, which they went over that day, about trying to control the volatility by watching the markets, watching to see what kind of, if we're in a bear market or a bull market, and then what kind of investments we should be in. Is the bear market um, US, is the bear market international, where should we be? And one of the things I've heard Tom say over and over again is there's liquidity in the, the stock market and with the funds that he's using. So use that liquidity to your advantage. When circumstances change, get out of what you need to get out of and get into what you need to get into. Um, don't let the, the fact that, well, I've owned this for however long stop you from then selling it if you really need to. So he's a very active manager in that regard. Right. And that act, the activity um, has to give us results and give us what we're looking for. What I was looking for in that style of management is what they call a low beta, meaning a low correlation to the stock market, meaning that we actually have some downside protection. Yeah. Um, sometimes I like to call it guardrails. So let's say we're going to go across a bridge. Uh, um, you want to do the Bay Bridge or? Key Bridge. Key Bridge. Okay. It's really beautiful. I, I drive that way if it's sunny. Probably not today. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, probably not. But you get up top there, you can see a lot of things. It's really, 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 really I'm nice. sorry, today is actually Sunday. It is supposed to be nice Sunday. This was a recorded show. The day we're recording it, it's not good. Oh, you blew it, Jeff. I'm you sorry. told everyone that. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you threw me off totally. All I'm right, sorry. the key, the key bridge, the key bridge. Let's say we we're um, paying the toll booth. We're going to head over the bridge into um, heading towards Annapolis from the Middle River side, I guess. Um, and we're getting ready to go through toll booth, and we see the bridge there, and we notice that there's no guardrails. Yikes! And the question would be: Is would you actually go across that bridge? No. You wouldn't. No. You know, <laughs> I'd turn around and go back. I wouldn't either. But imagine, we have a couple of things we could do. One is we could go real slow down the middle lane. I've heard that before. And try to get over there. Right. Now, well, the best thing about a guardrail is the fact that I've never hit one. I haven't either. And I know they're there. Yeah. And it makes me feel a lot safer. And for some reason, I'll just fly over that bridge because there's a guardrail there. Yeah, even in that right lane right up alongside the guardrail. Yeah. <laughs> it, sometimes you might worry, especially when you see uh, some videos of trucks and things going over the edge. But um, um, back to the financial part of the guardrail story. 
Imagine entering retirement with no guardrails on your investments, having no ability to feel safe or protected at all. Uh, is there any type of hedging? Is there any type of lower volatility in your portfolio at all? And that's why a few years ago, we were searching third-party money managers, and we built a relationship where we can have access to managers that will have ways of adding guardrails to the stock market. And that's really what, what Canterbury will fit into. Yeah, so Canterbury reduces our correlation to the overall stock market so that for our clients who are in this, if they hear one day that the market is way down, they know that they're not a one-to-one -one correlation to that. Um, Canterbury might be down a little bit, but most of the time it's not going to be down anywhere near what the overall stock market is in a severe drop. Right, but they are money managers that make buy and sell decisions, and um, they can it make is, right ones and make wrong ones. Right. And it is a risk investment. It's not to say you're never going to oh, go yeah. down in it, um, but the losses are going to be, there's some mitigation of that risk. Right, so as we talk today, if you find anything that you'd like more information about, you can go to our website, and there's a little questionnaire on the very bottom. You can fill that out and email us. That'll email us. Or you can call our offices at 410-692-9870 to get more information. Uh, the other investment speakers, we had a bunch of them, but one of them was speaking about Franklin funds and about mutual funds. Um, we brought Frank Franklin funds because that was the first fund I ever invested in back in the 1980s. And what we brought them in to talk about investing in a rising interest rate environment. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what's great about the Franklin funds is they're out of California. Um, they have lots of different investment choices. They have very experienced management, um, all different all different styles, um, but they have a, ver a really great bond market side in that they have an economic view of the next 10 years where they believe interest rates will stay relatively low. Over the next 10 years, wow. Well, relatively low. That doesn't mean we're not going up. They think okay. it's gonna go up. They don't think it's gonna skyrocket. <laughs> Um, and that's because of the way they see um, the unraveling of the, the zero interest environment, how it's going to change. Play out around the world? Yeah. Okay. And so the idea of that, of that topic that day, it was trying to talk about the use of mutual funds and how they're managing, how they try to watch the interest rates, how you can invest your money, and know that the mutual fund, which offers you um, portfolio diversification in an open-ended environment, Open-ended means that you buy a mutual fund and every day people are buying and selling those funds, but they actually manage it for you and they manage based on the objective. And within a family of funds, you can actually shift from one fund to another fund. Normally there's um, some cert certain time periods you need to stay in, but you have to um, manage right. and you can actually manage your funds there. Right. And Franklin Templeton is, like you said, a really large fund company. Uh, the Templeton part is named for John Templeton, who was a an international investor, um, pretty pretty well known, and so they've got uh, a footprint, if you will, all around the world, and uh, so they've got analysts and looking at you know markets, bond markets, stock markets, uh, all around the world. So they're a, a good place to be able to diversify widely. Yeah, you know, they own. Uh, they bought Templeton Funds a long time ago. Then they added Mutual Shares. That was another company they bought in, which was more of a, a stock manager. Added that in with Franklin's Bond Managers and Templeton's International Managers to perform this, to bring together this large um, investment firm. Um, right. So Franklin Funds. Um, that was one of our speakers that day, going over how to invest in a rising interest rate environment. And the retirement expo was a good day. Um, just was. like our, our radio show. It's a lot of fun being on, be on the radio. Uh, we thank you for listening so much. Um, the listeners of the show are very important to us. And we thank those that have been calling in and scheduling that free hour of time. And, and it's been nice to meet you and get to know you. Uh, we thank you for calling in. And if you want to become a client of Acres Finance Group or want to get a good second opinion, you just give us a call at 410-692-9870. Or we'll have more of Planning with a Purpose. We're going to be coming right back right after these messages. Welcome back to Planning with a Purpose. Call 410-583-1057 now to begin your plan. Once again, Brian Akers. Welcome back to Planning with a Purpose. Um, with me again is Jeff Akers. And, uh, and with me is Brian Akers. Yeah. 
Uh, it's a good thing. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. I was going to say something bad, but it would be too crazy to do that. We're cousins. We've known each other a long time, so... Right, and I try not to bring up too many stories about that, but if we want to go there, we could. But um, right now, we're going to just talk, we're going to keep talking about our expo. Right, that we can talk about in public. Yeah, we're not going to talk about our um, 14-hour baseball game that one day. Oh, we had a good time as kids. <laughs> oh, one day we decided to play one-on-one baseball. From, That's really hard to do. <laughs> from, um, and um, I was, I'm older. I'm, yes. I, I'm older, so I had to front Jeff runs and outs. Is and that, he played on his knees. And, no, that was basketball. Oh, uh, that was basketball. Yeah. Okay. No, but baseball, I had to bat left-handed or right-handed. I had to switch or something. We had different rules we kept adding. Right. He had to do something to keep me interested. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was a fun day. But we did play 14 hours. And then the very next day, we both had real Little League baseball games. They didn't go so well. I was 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. I don't even remember mine. And I, I, my <laughs> mom called your mom, and I believe you struck out all three also. Well, we that happened all the time anyway. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't move our arms that next day. Why am I telling these stories? Well, the reason, right. reason I'm telling Back these stories the is the fact that um, I love being on 105.7 The Fan. Um, I listen to the station all the time, and hopefully you guys do too. On 105.7 The Fan on weekends have financial talk shows, and we designed this financial talk show to try to get out how we do things, how we accomplish things. Which is planning with a purpose. Right. And exactly what it says is that we do financial planning based on the purpose that we set to it. That purpose has to be your purpose, where we're not taking a product or something that's out there and trying to, to get it to you. We're giving you a process. That process is planning and based on the purpose that we come up with by looking at your financial fingerprint. Right. So throughout this show today, what we're doing is covering our expo from a little over a week ago. And during that expo, we had a lot of investment topics. Another one of the investment topics is we had um, one of the guys from um, W.E. Donahue come in, um, James Pritchard, and he spoke on um, the Donahue Index and the Donahue process of how they tactically manage money. Right. It's another third-party money manager, uh, similar to what we've talked about with uh, Canterbury. And their process is just a little bit different. They they buy stocks, individual stocks from the S&P 500, but they keep an eye on where the market is going and they tactically look for times when they should be out or when should they, they should be in. What happens with um, W. Donahue, they have actual private management and then they also have an index mutual fund that people can buy with some smaller amounts of money. And so you can have this investment a couple of different ways. When they are tactically watching the market, what they did last summer was they were watching the short um, um, moving average versus a longer moving average. And whenever they see the shorter market um, go below the long market or the general long-term trend, they actually use that and some other secret sauce, they call it, to come up with when to sell. And then they watch the short and long-term market again. When things go positive, then they go right back in and buy again. And so currently they're in the market. Right. Um, right now they own 50 stocks. Right. And those 50 stocks that are based on the S&P 500, but they do a thing that's different than the S&P 500. The S&P 500 index is not equally weighted. It's cap weighted. So in S&P 500, you'll have the larger stocks have more percentage owner or percentage is is in that index than something called equal weighting. So they make up a larger percentage of the index. That might be an easier way to say it than I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> the, I'm sorry. English was not my number one thing. <laughs> math, I like the math part. The uh, What I was going to get to, I think, with the index is the regular S&P index is not equally re- weighted. So what was created um, with the S&P 500 is there is a way to monitor the S&P 500 where you equally weight every stock. That means if you had $100 and you had 50 stocks, you put $2 in every stock. You equally weight it. That means you would buy the small, the medium, and large. And the S&P 500, when you equally weight, actually has a better performance than the regular S&P 500. Hmm. And so Donahue and W. Donahue um, took that concept and that idea and said, well, what can we do better? And the idea is, well, how do we avoid large, large losses? Right. And the idea there was to tactically watch the markets and to when there's technical indicators that say we should get out, they actually will get out. And then they'll technically get back in. 
right. and they're not going to be um, trying to guess and have any emotions to it. It's, they're going to follow their tactical strategy. And so they have a history. And, and what's great is you can go through it and see how it fits. How does it fit in portfolios for us is we need money in the market. When we retire, we're not retiring just for a short period of time. We have a longevity risk that we have to maintain. We have to have money that grows. It has to beat inflation after taxes. So that means it has to make two and a half, three percent minimum just to be able to break even every year. Right. And then some. And so you have to have some of your portfolio in the stock market. So if we're in the stock market, why not consider having some money that is diversified? that has some way of hedging and watching for the the markets to try to limit the losses when things do go terrible. In the market, but have some way to avoid those really big losses. Back to your guardrails. Right yeah. Um, the problem I have is, well, is it just market timing? And market timing means you have to make two perfect decisions. You know, At, you sell and you have to buy. At the right time. Right. And the concept of the technical analysis is that they're not going to find two perfect times. Right. The market will actually have to go start going down before they indicate to sell, right. and the market would have to go from the bottom and start moving up before they indicate to buy, right. along with other technical things they're looking at for the, the market itself. So you never get out at exactly the peak, mm-hmm. and you never get in at exactly the bottom. But the history says that we're going to avoid the larger um, downturns whenever they do occur. Uh, the hardest part about them is we don't know when they're coming. We right. can see things are, are rumbling, sort of like a volcano. Right. There are some <laughs> indicators, but you don't know the exact date or time or anything like that when it's going to happen. Right. So at, at the expo, what we did is we invited the speaker from their company, and they went over this concept and explained to our crowd that day about what's going on. And um, we recommend that people read the prospectus on it, make sure they understand what it's all about. If you'd like to receive a prospectus about this kind of fund, you can go to our website. www.acresfinancial, that's A-K-E-R-S, financial.com. You don't try to spell financial, do you? No. Yeah, that's good. It's wise. Look, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got our first Google client recently. Really? Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Someone actually Googled on retirement financial planning, and, and Acres Financial came up, and then, then they called us, and we're getting them, getting to meet them very soon. Very nice. Yeah, it's a Google client. Okay, and you can also call Sorry. our office at 410-692-9870. All right, so the Retirement Expo, we had Canterbury Thermostat, we had Franklin Funds, we had Donahue Funds, and then we invited some topical things, such as real estate investing. Real estate investing and um, real estate investment trust and private and public real estate investment trust. Right. And when we're looking at real estate, most of the time we're looking for dividend income. So you want to have an idea what's the dividend of whatever it is you're looking to buy when it comes to real estate. Right. So these... These trusts, these investments, actually pull together commercial real estate based on whatever objective they have. They usually buy a niche of the real estate market, and then they they achieve a dividend by buying properties, fixing them up, renting them out. That rent becomes a dividend for the for the clients to live off of. Um, the real estate we would recommend that you keep your percentage low in your portfolio for that, somewhere between five ten percent. Um, it comes as a way of Drawing, bringing your income up, it does give pretty decent dividends depending on which funds you're in. It does have risk to it. A very Absolutely. Vo- very volatile with the economy, especially on the publicly traded side. And so we really have to watch um, what we invest in and, and why. Understanding that real estate is one of the pieces inside a diversified portfolio that will change the correlation of everything. So like if a client comes in to see us, I've seen it a lot where they come in about like 90% of, them, of their funds are all correlated to the market. So that means they go up and down exactly with the market. And that's not a bad thing as you're growing and trying to accumulate your money. You want to take a little more risk. But when we re- get ready to retire, we want to slow down. We don't want to have a wave that comes all the way down. We want to be able to achieve a more consistency over time. Right. And you, you bring up a good point about – you know, real estate has 5 or 10% uh, in it, something like that. But we diversify our overall portfolios. Depending on the type of uh, investment person you talk to, they might only be doing stocks and bonds. And so Brian mentioned that 
you know, they come in and everything's correlated. It's all the same type of investment. There's no diversification across different types of assets. You might talk to someone else and they've just got a product and it's that one product that they want everything to go into. And we don't believe in any of that. We think that the plan, the your personal objectives determine what we need to use and we need to spread that out over several different uh, types of assets in order to achieve that sort of balanced portfolio that Brian's talking about where we can avoid the really big drops when bad things happen in the economy. And we also brought in uh, an expert um, to talk about annuities. And so um, Sam, Sam, during that hour, he was going through many different types of annuities. He covered from a 30,000-foot view, if you will, uh, what are annuities. Um, they're issued by insurance companies, annuities are. That gives them a certain tax advantages uh, that we could talk about. There are, are several different kinds of annuities. A lot of people, they hear the word annuity and they instantly think, well, it's going to pay me a certain amount of money until I die. And that is a type of annuity. But there are other types. There are variable annuities. There are fixed annuities. And there are things called fixed indexed annuities. And they're, they all work a little bit differently. They can all have a place depending on your purpose. And then he went on to talk a little bit about some features that have been added in recent years, like income riders, which have gotten a lot of, a lot of traction in recent years, um, just the way they're advertised sometimes. Well, the, but, the traction on income riders is because there's no interest rate, so they have to have yeah. some other benefit to sell. Right. So they've, they've got another benefit to sell that they can put a big number with, but mm -hmm. we just have to understand what that big number is applying to. Is it your actual money, or is it an accounting value that's used inside that annuity to generate income? And when he was speaking, he was talking about what do you really have? What do you really own if you already have an annuity? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very important thing for those that are listening, is what do you own with your annuity? Do you know? Do you understand it? So when you come in to sit down with Acres Financial Group, we'd ask that you bring the actual annuities that you might own or might be considering buying. You bring that with you. We'll review it, explain how it works, and see how it applies to your exact situation. Right. There are, I can't tell you how many times folks come in and they say, well, I've got an annuity that does X, Y, and Z. And I look at the contract and said, well, here's what it says. And they're like, uh, that's not how I understood <laughs> What, what was happening? A lot of times they're they're listening for what they want to hear. Sure. And then they don't really hear everything that's being said. And then the hardest part is getting them to understand the whole situation, how the money's invested, and how it applies to them now and in the future, and how it applies to their beneficiaries. And that's why we take the time to try and go through it and explain it until you have a have a grasp, a sense of what it is that you have. So the annuities are another piece of our diversified portfolio. The fixed annuities are the ones that we use. We use fixed annuities that are, that are tied to a fixed interest rate. And then we also use fixed index annuities to give us an interest rate that's tied to how the market does. Right. And that fixed is part of our guardrails that we've been talking about. Because when it's fixed, there's some guarantee from the insurance company against loss. So... Those are true guardrails that we can have on our financial portfolio. So as we go over these topics today, if you'd like to find out more information, you go to our website at acresfinancial.com or just give us a call at 410-692-9870. Call us and we can set up a time to go over where you are now and give you a second opinion on what you need to do. Yep. Join us for more of Planning with a Purpose right after these messages. Welcome back to Planning with a Purpose. Call 410-583-1057 now to begin your plan. Once again, Brian Akers. Welcome back to Planning with a Purpose. Today's Mother's Day. We want to wish Happy Mother's Day to everyone, all the mothers out there, not to everyone. <laughs> yeah, not to everyone. Not to the guys. Yeah. Your time's coming in June. Yeah, yeah, we'll wait for that day. 
<laughs> but for now, what we've been doing, been doing is going over a retirement expo we had and all the different topics that we brought together that day. And the reason we're doing this today is to, to basically give you uh, an idea of how much co- is covered at our expo and so that you can join us and then maybe be a part of it next year when we have our big retirement expo again. Uh, but throughout the year, we have many other events scheduled. Uh, what kind of events do we have, Jeff? Well, we do some training at our, our Lutherville Center sometimes. We also have seminars mm-hmm. that come up. And uh, you can find a list of these things as they come up on our website at acresfinancial.com. Yeah, we have an events tab. You can go there and see That's some right. things. You can also call them and get on our email list. Right. We send out a, a weekly email. And, you know, folks, if you, you like the financial stuff, it's there. If you like to golf, there are golf tips. If you like to cook, there's even recipes. The email is very comprehensive. Yeah, and that email, actually, we send that through a blog. Um, and that blog goes to um, to our Acres Financial Facebook page. You can see most of the email, not not all of my top, not all of my um, extras I add to it, but the basic um, basic newsletter we send out to our Facebook page also at acresfinancial.com. Not, <laughs> Sorry, Acres Financial on Facebook, not .com. Right. Yeah, Facebook, just search for Acres Financial. Yeah. Um, if you're searching on the web, it's acresfinancial.com, A-K-E-R-S. Everybody wants to spell it like it's, it's land. We had so many different topics that day. We've covered the investment topics. We also had, um, I know I spoke about Social Security and the Social Security changes. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a, a, a room full of people listening to the ideas about what's out there on Social Security. The main thing I was trying to get across is that whenever we choose to draw Social Security, that will then trigger our spousal and other benefits for everyone else involved in their family. So understanding when to draw is very important, and I believe that it leads to most advice saying try to wait to your full retirement age to draw Social Security on a, just a basic um, concept. Okay. Kind of as a, I guess, a rule of thumb. Because yeah. once you start Social Security, that's a government-guaranteed benefit for the rest of your life. Uh, m- uh, most people, 75% people, draw it the second they're first available, and that's at age 62. And that will be the lowest possible, bene- possible benefit available out there. And we can actually max- do better than that, get better benefits longer t- and get it as long as we live. So understanding the choices out there is still very important, even though they cut down a few of our choices recently. <laughs> yes, they did. I love it when they do things behind closed doors. And also that day, we invited an expert in um, insurance. We had him come in, and we went over a couple topics, and one of them was um, long-term well, care. Right, long-term care and, and legacy. We've talked a lot about planning and setting up a plan to achieve your goals. And once we get that plan established, then we have to look at what are the risks to our plan? What kinds of things could happen that can derail it? And one of the things that can certainly derail a plan is long-term care expenses. It's very expensive if you require long-term care. And we are living longer. You know, Brian talked about longevity being a risk as well. So he just talked about some the, the risks that we have with regard to long-term care and then some ways to cover that risk. And one of the ways uh, that he discussed was there are actually life insurance policies that can be used for long-term care. And we can, uh, if we end up not needing that long-term care benefit, it's a life insurance policy. It'll pay a death benefit to the, the people who survive us. So we can preserve or give a legacy uh, to the people that survive us. If something happens where we do need care, we have that long-term care benefit built in uh, to the policy. And so it protects our plan against that risk of paying for long-term care. One of the biggest issues with long-term care now is if you buy the long-term care health care. Right, sort of traditional long-term care insurance. Uh, one of the things that happens with that is the, the premium that you pay every year. People, honestly, when they first get a quote for it, they choke on the cost of it. But understanding then that that premium can go up. Uh, Now, the insurance company has to apply to the insurance administration in order to raise it. They can't raise it just on you, but they can raise it on everyone just like you. And it's been those premiums have been rising over the years. Using the the life insurance version, uh, you can buy a rider that provides inflation protection and can make it a lifetime benefit. 
But that premium that you pay for that is locked in. It's guaranteed not to change. So you can have a, a sure way to know your cost in order to cover that risk of long-term care expenses. All right. So this is just uh, another way, another tool that's out there um, that you need to look at when it comes to long-term care. Generally, your family needs a long-term care plan. That plan means how are we going to pay for it? Do we have a small enough amount of assets that we're going to use that first and then come under the benefits provided by the state? Or are we going to try to fund it so that we can protect our legacy? Or do we have more than enough assets to be able to afford it, to be able to pay the bills each, each month as things go along? And one of the things that Brian tells people is if your plan is to move in with your kids, make sure you let your kids know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so as they pick uh, as they pick locations and houses, they can know if they can take care of you or not. They well, need to have a bedroom on that first floor kind of thing. But you know your kids, and you might not want to tell them <laughs> <laughs> because they might pick a location and make sure they don't have room for. Now you. we're getting personal. <laughs> yeah, and that's tough. Now um, you're also were, you're also were in, involved with the other seminar that um, that was spoken about. The insurance expert went over. Um, that was yes. more about estate planning, life insurance combination. Well, yes. Uh, the, the person who did the legacy planning, the life insurance and long-term care, uh, he did also talk about wills and trusts and just laying out your estate, having it organized and in place and understanding um, what a will does and does not do. Uh, it does not avoid probate. It just tells probate how things are supposed to go. And then a, a trust, you know, things that a trust can do for you. And it's it's not that a trust is for everyone, because it's not, but it's a good idea to sit down and talk with someone and understand what your plan is and see if that fits, if it's something that you should do. Right. Um, life insurance, there are needs. Absolutely. And th throughout our life, there is a need for life insurance. Um, it might change as your family changes, as your debt situation changes. Generally, as you achieve your financial goals, your life insurance need might not be there. Um, right. but, but also, life insurance provides lots of great benefits. One of its best benefits is the fact that the death benefit is income tax-free to those that receive it. So life insurance can supply money when needed most, and that's when someone passes away. Right, and that life insurance can be used to cover debts. Like Brian said, it can also be used to cover the, the cost of an estate. If you have a particularly large estate, um, it can be used to pay the taxes on that estate. Um, it can be used to pay for several different things. Or, so provide, liqui legacy. or provide liquidity or uh, wealth replacement or to charity. There's, there's so much that we can do when it comes to um, the use of life insurance. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't believe that people are actually get too old to look into it. It just depends on the situation to see if the numbers work or not. Right. What are your circumstances? What's it cost? And what's the need? So we also have our license as insurance agents, so we can actually shop around different companies, different styles of plans to come up with the best for you and your family. Right. So at the Retirement Expo, we brought in experts like that. We also brought in an expert from Evans Funeral Home, and they talked about pre-planning and veterans benefits. Right. That was Casey Lynch came and talked about that. Uh, I believe he shows up sometimes during the breaks here. Yes. Somebody um, does. Um, <laughs> but his, he, the voice does. I, the I, voice I haven't does. seen him recently. Um, but he did come in for one show back in February, and we also had him at the expo. And during the expo, he went over the, the idea of what's out there for veterans, and there's a lot more than people know. Right. The, well, there's pre-planning. There's the veterans benefits and things that, you know, if you're a veteran, there are some benefits out there that will be paid for uh, for you by the VA. And so it's good to sit down and, and talk to someone about what are those, which ones do we want to use, which ones are we not interested in using. Uh, there are even some benefits for the spouse, potentially, of a veteran. So it's good to, to just learn what your options are. He also talked about pre-planning uh, your, your funeral and uh, the kind of the way that works. And a lot, one of the questions that they get a lot of times is, Okay, I pre-planned it with you, but what if I move or what if I decide I want to go somewhere else? And he just he can explain and go through how those benefits can transfer. It's not that the receiving funeral home, if you will, has to accept that as total payment, if you will. 
but a lot of times they will. And so pre-planning is just another way to take something off the plate for your family in a difficult time. It's something that they don't have to worry about um, when that time comes. Yeah, so that day was full of information. We also invited a real estate agent who covered about how to actually get your house ready to sell and how to sell it, how, what the market's like now. Because some people, as they get ready to retire, they look at their home and they might want to downsize. They might want to change location. And so they haven't sold their house in 20, 30, 40 years. And it's a whole new process. So I think getting that kind of information out was great. Yep. We also had an attorney speaking about estate planning. Right. And going over wills and power of attorney, um, having health care, advanced directives, having oh. maybe possible trust, understanding the basics of that. All those legal documents. We also had someone talking about vacations. And oh, that was the fun well, topic. Well, what was funny was she spoke right before Casey did about funeral pre, pre-planning. So he was like, well, make sure you do the vacation first, then come to pre-plan your funeral <laughs> after that. <laughs> Yeah, what I what I try to do in financial planning is I say, we, well, we want to do estate planning and and prepaid funeral planning as if we might pass away tomorrow, and then as soon as we got the planning done, go live the rest of our life. Uh, we need to invest our money to last a lifetime, so we can make sure our money lasts as long as we do. But that estate planning, pre-planning the funeral, all is is part of the planning. It's almost like little boxes that we have to check and make sure we accomplish that and get it done so that when something suddenly happens, we know everything's in place and proper. Right. But the uh, the expo was a, it was really a good time. It's a busy day for us, believe me, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, we enjoy putting it on every year. Uh, this year it was at the University Center up in Aberdeen, which had nice classrooms laid out. It worked out uh, very well. So we were very pleased with uh, with how that went. And we had a pretty good crowd there during the day, I thought. It was, it was very, very good. It was excellently done by our, one of our key members of our staff, Kim Haight. She organizes that throughout the year, organizes everybody together, gets them all there. Everyone showed up. Everyone did a great job. And then she puts together the Acres Financial team of employees, and they were everywhere, um, um, just working and helping and talking with the clients. It was a good day. It was nice to see um, all all of our team at Acres Financial Group, over 12 employees working there, and how um, they all interacted with the clients and, and all the prospective clients that came and listeners that were that came to that sh- that um, free expo that we provided that, that day. And for the clients, a lot of times it's nice for them to be able to come in and put a face with a name, someone who they've talked to on the phone but hadn't necessarily gotten to meet face-to-face. And the expo provides a really good opportunity uh, to do that. All right, so be sure to um, look on our website and look at our events tab. Make okay. sure you, um, um, if you want to sign up for our weekly email, you just okay. get, the, get information to us. You can also get a second opinion, or if you have any of these topics or you want to find more information, you can give us a call about that. Our phone number is 410-692-9870. And that second opinion, it's free to come and talk to us for an hour, so take advantage of that. Yeah, and then um, we also have our... I'm putting together some seminars for the remainder of the year, so we'll have a little schedule for that so you can come out and hear on different talks that we're going to be having. Click that events tab on acresfinancial.com. All right, Jeff, well, thank you for coming in today. Well, certainly. And uh, enjoy enjoy your Sunday. And everyone out there, I'd like to wish again um, happy Mother's Day. Um, thank you for listening to Playing with a Purpose today. If you have any questions, go to our website at Acres Financial or give us a call at 410 692 9870. Thank you for listening. We're off to church. I hope you are too. You've been listening to Planning with a Purpose with your host, Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group. Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group is a registered representative offering securities through Kalos Capital, Inc. and investment advisory services through Kalos Management, Inc. Akers Financial Group is not an affiliate or subsidiary of Kalos Capital or Kalos Management and does not provide tax and legal services. Advice given on planning for a purpose is general in nature and one should seek further advice from their financial advisor, broker, attorney, or tax accountant before investing. Be sure to read each prospectus carefully to understand all the risks associated with each investment. 